In this week's video, we're going to make a knife sheath out of leather for this knife. So a few weeks back you might have seen uh, where we did a knife restoration video and we restored this knife and now it needs a sheath and that's what we're making today. So we're going to make our sheath out of leather. We've made plenty of items out of leather before but they've always been made from a kit and this time we're going to actually try this for the first time 100% on our own, not making from a kit. Okay, what kind of supplies do you need for this project? First of all you need a workbench or a table. And we're going to be doing a lot of hammering and cutting, so I'm going to have a board that I'm going to put down. We're going to do our work on that. We need a piece of cardboard. We're going to trace our knife blade on that. You need a needle and thread for leather. And of course, you need to pre-punch your holes in the leather because you, it's really hard to stick the needle through. And we don't have a punch for that, but we're going to use a finishing nail and a hammer. We'll see how that goes. Of course, you also need the knife that you're going to make the sheath for because you got to know the size and shape of the blade. So what we're going to do is we're going to trace the knife blade, shape of the blade, onto a piece of cardboard and then we'll cut that out and that'll be our template that we'll use uh, for making our sheath. And we'll trace around it. Now if you can see there's a little bit of a belly here on the front of the blade and then it gets thinner coming back. So we can't really do that uh, in our sheath. So we'll have to widen it slightly here. So we'll, st we'll uh, just start here at the widest point and we'll come around cutting my pencil a little bit and we'll just trace the blade to get from here up to this area. I think I'll put a line there where the edge of the blade is but then we need to bump up All right, now we gotta cut this shape out with a utility knife. The trick with using a utility knife is to take your good old time. There's no hurry, and it is so easy to slip off in the wrong direction and or cut right through your piece that you wanna keep. So take your good old time. There's no hurry, there's no rush, and you don't need to go through the whole thing all at once. So I'm gonna, I'm just barely cutting this thing, and then I'm gonna go back a second time and make finish my cut going completely through. Now I'm going to mark it just so I don't forget. That's the blade side. This was the the back of the knife. So the leather we're using today is a veg tan leather. Uh, the piece we have is dyed already. There is a harness shop and they make harnesses and saddles and uh, this is some cutoffs that uh, they were using from the saddle that they're making. So we got that and we're going to use that for our knife sheath today. It's pretty thick. Um, I'm going to say at least an eighth, maybe a little more. Uh, three sixteenths, maybe. This is the good side of the leather. Uh, there's a little cut here so we want to avoid that. So uh, it shows through on the back as well. So yeah, we're gonna put this down and figure out what do you think? Do it there. Think we should try it there? Yeah. Yeah, we could do there and then we could get a second piece there. One thing that we have to watch for on our knife, it's a little thicker here than most knives. We'll have to block this out a little bit before we can put on the piece that goes up to fasten to the belt. Basically we traced the knife uh, blade pattern, but we need to go a little bit beyond that. We need a lip to put our holes through and that we can sew through. So we're going to need the inside and the outside, and then we need a little piece that will be a strip in the middle. So we'll cut that as well. Okay, we're going to line up our pattern again and now we're going to have to try to add 
probably a quarter inch all the way around. I think I'm going to switch to a marker. I can barely see the line. So I'm just going to stay out about a quarter to three eighths of an inch. So there's our piece we were cutting out and uh, this is the inside and uh, now we need to do another side just like this and then we'll do a third one and we'll cut out the middle so that we'll just have this little uh, quarter inch uh, three eighths inch border that we'll sew that in between and sandwich them together. This is the kind of thing that uh, we do on this channel, just to try it, just to do it, see if we can do it, and show others how they can do it too. But yeah, if you have some helpful tips, go ahead and leave a comment below. All right, for that piece, it's going to be a hair bigger. We'll line them up. Yeah, it is a little bit bigger, but that's okay. We're going to line them up here. We're going to put our pattern back on, and we're going to try to use this pencil and make this show up good. And we have to cut out the middle. Okay, so now we need to cut out the other side. So we're going to flip it this way so that it's a mirror image. And uh, I think it'll work right there. So I'll hold it and maybe you can trace it. When you do, remember to stick your pen in so that your line doesn't get, you know, wider. So we have our three pieces cut out, uh, bottom piece, the middle piece, and then the top. And that will, they'll sandwich together. We'll leave a little space for the knife blade to go down and through. So we need to punch holes here. We're gonna use a nail. We're gonna punch on down through all three layers. That way we can get holes in there so we can sew them together. So yeah, uh, sewing it is the next part. Hey, our mugs have arrived. We're unboxing some mugs that we had ordered from Teespring. Success is doing what you love. Sorry I missed your call. I was on the, on the other line. Live your own dream. Not someone else's. For the experienced YouTube play button. Every fool thinks he is a wise man. Every wise man thinks of himself as a fool. My fishing buddies call me dad. We offer all six of these mugs in our Teespring store. You can get them in any color on their store. We got uh, one of each. We got blue, yellow, white, orange, gray, background, and black as well. I like them. I'm impressed. I think they've done a good job. Hope you like them too. Check out the links in the description below. Probably the guy at the harness shop is gonna watch this video. He'll probably have some tips for us. So, how are we gonna get started? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, let's see, I think I'll line up the tip and we'll put our first hole in there. And 
Just getting into the wood a little bit and that'll hold it in place hopefully. And now we'll take our other nail and we'll just put holes about every quarter inch uh, in order to give us holes to sew through. Well, this is where we're at so far. Uh, I left these two middle nails in to hold it together, but we're gonna start sewing on each side. And then once we get there, uh, we'll tie off and then we'll put the rest of the holes down through and we'll sew out to the end on both sides then. I think that's gonna be easier than trying to put all the holes in at once. This is a special thread for leather. It's wax coated. When you sew leather, you sew down through the hole and then you go up the next one and down the other until you finish that part and then you do it backwards all the way around so you sew the entire thing on both sides. So when you're sewing leather it's not like fabric. You pull this through but you don't have a double strand. You just hold this end and you just push up through and you'll have a single strand going all the way around. Okay, now we're sewed up to here, and we're going to complete the holes on this side. And it does not take two people to do this usually. Our holes are a little bit small. Normally you'd have a punch for this or if you have a pre-made kit the holes are a bit bigger and you can just easily sew by hand. But since we're using a nail our holes are not quite as big as what they should be. So as we're sewing I realized uh, the width here where this sticks out. Um, what we need to do we need to build this out here. So we're gonna to have to sew a couple pieces of leather on, but it's gonna be easier to do it now before this is sewed all the way up. All right, this is the back of our case. And this was the piece that we cut out from the, the center piece. And I think we're gonna make that into our uh, piece that goes up to uh, have a loop through it for a belt to attach. So now I just need to estimate how long I need that to be. You know, as I'm cutting these slits in here, I'm remembering that kits always seem to have holes drilled at the ends of these. So I'm thinking if this starts to rip, it's just going to continue to want to rip. But if there's a round hole there, it won't rip past the hole. So I think we're going to get the drill out and drill little holes at all four of these edges. Yeah, I can see how it's rounded. It's not going to tend to tear past that. Where if I just left it straight, maybe my cut would get bigger and bigger over time.
Okay, so we took the needle off of this piece of thread and we're just going to let it hang. Getting a new piece and we're going to tie it, or we're going to sew this on and then we'll come back to this. All right, so we got a nail in there to hold these together and then we're going to start pushing through this one, I suppose. Now let's go through this one that way there, diagonal one. Less likely to come apart, I don't know. Go back through this other hole here. And I don't know, I'm going to just use a square knot. I don't know if there's a better knot for this. All right, back to this. See what we're doing now we've come this way and now we're turning around and going back through the opposite way so go through this next hole All right, we've stitched all the way around and back again. And now we're back where we started at. If I ever did this again, uh, I was punching my holes from the back. And the back looks really good. But the front, my stitch is not really, really all that straight. So when you punch your holes, make sure you punch from the front, not from the back. Since we made it back here to where we started, we're going to go ahead and tie off. And then we need to finish punching our holes. And then we'll just start with a new piece of thread to finish this portion. So it'll be easier to punch this time. Uh, I was thinking of continuing to punch through the front. But now that I have this piece on, well, I guess I can nail it onto an edge. That might make it easier for me. So my daughter, who is much better at sewing than I am, had some things that she wanted to go take care of. So it's just me now finishing up the sewing on this. So we'll see how this goes. I'm going to start in the back so that my knot is hidden. I have to go through this same hole that I already went through twice. That's the one thing about starting and stopping in the middle. So there we go it through and yeah my holes aren't that big I guess so I have had to use the uh, pliers to help pull through all the way around so that's what we've been doing let me see here we can pull most of this through about to there probably get it good and tight do a little knot so as we've been sewing, as we pull the last previous stitch through, I put my thumb there to hold it tight. That way it stays nice and tight. And so that's why we were using two of us earlier. It made it go a lot faster, but you don't have to have two people to do this. One person can do it just fine. It did make it faster, especially when we're stitching back and it's really tight. So like right now I'm going through pretty easy, but on the as I'm stitching back through, it'll probably be a little more difficult once again. If you didn't see the video where we restored this old knife, go back and check that out. You might enjoy it. And uh, there's the sheath for it. All that's left to do, we need to get some kind of a clasp on here. Just something to hold the knife in so that uh, I'm out in the woods or whatever. It doesn't fall out. But yeah, right now it fits really, really well. Wouldn't be any chance of it falling out at this point, but yeah, there might be in future. So we ought to put something on there just to play it safe. So I put four holes in here and basically I'm, 
I'm trying to avoid this loop where a belt would go through, so I'm just going to sew through these holes to sew this on. And then I'll get a snap that I can uh, put on one of those rivet type snaps. And uh, yeah, this will just wrap around and hold the knife in. Yeah, I think I'm going to knot it on the inside of the clasp because it's less likely to rub. It's more likely to rub out on this side. And we'll just push through here three or four times on both sides. Now I just need a snap on there. And the uh, belt loop is totally independent yet, so. Well, it is another day and we're gonna put the snap on here. So we bought these little craft snaps and that's what I'm gonna use. And the way they work, they come with a little tool that you put them in there and you hammer this thing in. Yeah, that's how they work. So anyway, the leather's a little bit thick for them, so I have to carve this down to about half the thickness before I can get started. Once it starts to peel, I can kind of pull it this way. All right, next thing we need to do is put a hole in each end where the snap's gonna go. So this will be the bottom one. And the way it works, we take this little plate, set it down. And we have two sets. This is the bottom set. Let's see, when this is folded down, this comes up through. So this goes in the bottom. Sets in there. And this goes on top of it. I like to put them how they're going to go when I put these on, because then I know that I'm not putting them on upside down. So this piece will go in here. We'll put that back piece on to hold it. We'll put the front piece on. Start it on there. Put this little dimple in there. That rounds it down. And then we hammer it. Snap it down. It snaps kind of hard. Comes off fairly easy, but it snaps down kind of hard. Of course, it's. There we go. All right. You can sand leather, so. Uh, yeah, these don't line up perfectly, so I'm going to take a little sandpaper and see if I can sand it down. sand this edge a little bit, get a little bevel on it. All three layers are now basically even on both sides. There's a couple places like back in here it's really hard to get to. Uh, they're not quite there but the rest of it pretty much is. Well if you've enjoyed this video please share it with your friends and hit that like button and subscribe as well if you haven't done that already. And if you'd like to receive notifications when we upload the next video, hit that notification bell. Thank you. We'll see you on the next one. Mm -hmm.